This is an electric piano I bought off of Amazon and I'm gonna show you how to build it. Last year, I filled up this shelf with a bunch of electronic kits and never actually ended up using any of them. So I thought it'd be cool that we did a series where we went through every single one of these kits, built them together, I showed you how it worked, and if you wanted to get it or follow along, there'd be a link in the description where you can go buy it and we can build it together. Let's just start with the top pile right here. What's this? Also, if you have a kit online you want me to review, just link it and I'll go buy it and then I'll build it for you. So this is a DIY electric piano. I'm not sure how good the sound's going to be, but it comes with eight different sounds, eight different buttons, and you have to put it all together yourself. The only thing it comes with is a board with printed labels, and then obviously it's you just have to put everything through and you can solder it up together. We get eight switches, then we get an IC, and one of those IC adapters so that if it burns out, you can just swap it, like a quick swap. All these pins are super bent, so we're gonna have to go and bend them ourselves. We got some capacitors here, that's three of the same, and then one big one, and a little power terminal so you can put in your battery, I guess. And then a speaker, obviously, with a shitty cable we're going to replace. First thing we're going to need is our soldering iron. I'll put a link below where you can get one of these. I got this one on Amazon for like 10 bucks. I'll put a picture up of the paper that you're supposed to receive with the kit. It shows everything you have in the kit, and I would recommend separating it all on the table like we do here to make sure everything's ready and organized for when you build it. You should have six 2K resistors that go through R3, R4, R6, R7, R8, and R9. You should have one 10K resistor and then two 1K resistors. In the video, I forgot about one of the 1K resistors as I was building it, but in the end, I showed that we went back and built it. So just keep a note of that. The next step is just going to be literally just placing them in the holes. You do have to be somewhat careful with this because they do snap, but I've got plenty so I don't really care. We're going to be soldering on the side with all the little contact patches. So this side is just printed so that we know where to put everything, but this side is the important one we're going to be soldering to. So let's just put all of our resistors through. Also don't put one in and then solder and get all of it in. Make sure it all fits and everything's right, and then we're gonna go and solder it in. All right, so that's all our 2Ks through. We just gotta put the 1K through. At this point, I'm just weeding in one side and then bending in the other, but that's it. That's the resistors right there. Now I think we have to do the switches, but I'm definitely gonna need a plier to fix those pins. Most of these metals, they'll bend maybe once or twice, and then once you bend it again, they're gonna snap. Okay, look at that, perfect fit. I think if you can get them through the hole, then you can go and put in the pressure and then they'll just bend in place. But if one's not through the hole, you're gonna screw it up. Uh, yeah, that works. As long as you can get them through the holes, once you give it a bit of pressure, they'll start to fit and that actually looks really nice. All right, so I don't know if the camera missed a lot of stuff, but we put in all resistors. They didn't really fit, so we kind of got them on this slanted angle because I used my own and not the ones that came with the kit. Then we got all the switches through, we needed to kind of just align them into the holes and then once you push through the pins molded into the shape of the holes if you try to align them with a the plier outside and then you miss a hole i almost broke a couple of these switches so i would recommend if you could just get them to align in the holes and then you just push it through it'll, they'll bend in the right direction you just have to give it a bit of a push just don't do it like this because you're going to break your board in half do it individually now that we got all the resistors in i think we just have to get our ic in which has totally screwed up pins. So the same thing, I'm just gonna get them in the general direction. These are way softer. If I could just get it to align in the holes. Oh, there we go. See, so it's aligned in the holes, but I'm just gonna give it a hard push. And now all the pins bent over. I'm gonna grab these capacitors and do the same thing. So we got three of these little brown pill looking ones. These are gonna be labeled C1, C2, and C3. And those are gonna go right here, the 104 resistance. I throw the, that like that. It doesn't need to be perfect. It just needs to not touch anything else. Then we're gonna slide the other one right behind it. Also, it's not a big deal if they're touching now. It's more a big deal if they're touching when you're putting electricity through it. So I'm just gonna get it through. And then we got one more to fit. I have no clue where it goes. Oh, right here. Where it's labeled 104 and you see C2. Switch one to switch six is going to be two Ks, then 
1K and a 10K. Then you got your three capacitors up here. Then your big capacitor, there's a side with white on it and there's a side with black. This one does need to be placed in the right direction. There's also a short and a long uh, prong coming out of it. So make sure you put it onto the right direction, uh, color to color, black to black. At the bottom, you'll also see which side is color. So the shorter prong is color. So we're just gonna slide it in like that. And this one should go as low as you can. Boom. It's a pretty tight fit too. All right. All right, so you just split your ends here and then I'm gonna come in with my strippers and we're just going to peel it off right here. Another way of doing it, I don't think I have a lighter on me, but you just light with a flame very gently and then either with scissors or with pliers, you kind of just peel off that melted area. Get some exposed metal that you could stick through a hole. It doesn't have to be that much. Make sure you twirl it too. Don't try and stick it through while they're all brittle. So I was mistaken, we're, we're missing one more resistor. There's one for each switch, and then at the end, there's a 1K resistor right under the IC. So we're just gonna slide this, it's a, it's a 1K. Put that through right here. Okay, let's do a little recap. We have a resistor for each switch. Then we have our three 104 resistors, or sorry, capacitors. We got two stacked on top of each other, or C1 and C3. And then we have C2 right next to them over there too. Those three are all the same, so it doesn't matter which one's in which. Right under that, you have your little IC adapter. You don't have to use this, but I would recommend it so that if it burns, you could just swap it. And then right next to that, you have your big capacitor, your 1.7 UF. Then I've got everything bent over like this so that I can just tap them and then go and cut them through. Rest our soldering iron on that little metal pad for a couple seconds, and then we're gonna feed in just a little bit of our soldering iron and that should fill the hole. If it's not heated before, there's gonna be a bunch of issues. So just give it a little heat on the pad, wait a couple seconds and then start feeding it through. From the angle that I had with my face behind the massive camera, these looked like really good solders, but seeing the camera angle, these are really bad. You really wanna wait a bit longer and let the pad heat up more so that the solder goes all the way around. But again, from my angle, I couldn't see that. Towards the end, you'll see me do a better job and go back and fix those. All right, look at that beauty. Oh, now it should work, I think. We just need to get our IC in there and I do not remember what end this goes in. So there's, there's a little, there's a little like hole or a half circle hole in the adapter and in this. I just don't know if I put it down the right way. Oh, I did. There's a marking. There's a marking that says the side with the little hole in it. It's not a hole, it's like, Little tap in it goes towards the bottom of the board. Oh, looks like we're in. All right, looks like we're working. Let's get a power supply and plug it in and see if we can play some music. Paper sheet, it can do three to nine volts of power. So I'm just gonna grab a nine volt battery and wire it in. Grab one of these, snip it in the ends. This is a little adapter. I got these on Amazon for super cheap. All right, so I got a little screwdriver. You just have to turn left. Just make sure that they're in the middle here that they're not leaking those little strands. They're not touching each other. And then you just have to get a battery to plug into that. Vibration, something's happening. Oh, it works. So it works, that's our little electric piano. You can go and put in those little buttons if that's what you want. Oh. Maybe not. That's pretty cool. It sounds like absolute garbage, but that's how it works. Just to go over everything, we went, we put in all our resistors, we put in all our switches, then we did our capacitors. Don't forget the little resistor, the 1K hiding here in the back. Then we did our IC, which is our little 555 module. It comes with the kit. It's just a little thing. You plug it in and you make sure that the little notch in it matches the bottom side of the board. It actually shows you a little drawing of the notch. So this way is the bottom of the board because it stands up like that. And there you go. It sounds pretty bad, but it works. If this helped you, give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one.